John Schuster, and I've been working with uh, wings and ground effect for many years, uh, somewhat uh, stimulated by the work that Dr. Alexander Lippisch did back in the 60s at Collins Radio Company, where he developed the concept of the, the ram wing and the airfoil boat, as they called it. Uh, this model here is, works on that principle, and it's um, a model of one of Lippisch's uh, later ground effect airplanes, or wing and uh, ground effect. It's a Dornier model called the X113, and you can look that up. Very, very, very similar here, except it will have sponsons because it takes off from water. It will also have polyhedral wingtips, somewhat like we have on this model, and in order to uh, improve the uh, stability of the airplane. The way this uh, concept works is that uh, it's called a captured air bubble. As the airplane moves along the ground, air is, is uh, uh, pushed under the wing and the trailing edges are sealed against the water of the ground and so the air basically comes to a, a halt under there and we call that stagnation pressure. And that's what lifts the model up. As the model lifts up, then the air vents, but as it continues to move forward, it, it continues to process this captured air bubble through, through the wing. Uh, the T-tail is, is uh, on there to keep the nose down because you may be familiar with the uh, unlimited hydroplanes and how they, uh, once they hit rough water and pitch up, they'll continue to depart. Uh, front over back. This would do the same if we didn't have the T-tail. And this is this T-tail is a lifting tail. You can see from the, the, the camber or the curvature of the, the surface that it's, it's designed to lift up. Uh, because as the airplane moves out of ground effect, up and away, the center pressure moves from the centroid of the area forward. And as it does that, then because there's no movable control surfaces, it pitches up. As a result, the way to defeat that is to uh, make a large enough tail that keeps the nose down when, when it's moving along. Uh, that's the basic principle. The X-113 was 1965, maybe, uh, and the Collins airfoil boat was 63 or earlier. <clears throat> this concept here is exactly the same, just a little bit different dihedral angle and uh, a lifting tail. It also has a surface along here that tries to improve the trailing edge seal against the ground. And uh, so its performance maybe is a little bit better. This one's the same. There's many ways of showing you how they're, they're built. This one, open structure with, with monocoat. And uh, the rest of these are, are basically solids. Uh, and what I found out over the years of flying these things is that it really doesn't matter what goes on under the wing. You can have skin over the wing on the underside, or you can have it uh, just um, formed single sheet of balsa in this case. And you can see the constant element lines, you know, 10, 15, 20, 25%. Well, actually it's a little bit more than that, but at any rate, and it's just curved. And, and so it doesn't uh, really affect the performance. And I found out quite by accident through damaging these models that even with the skin removed off the bottom on one side and skin on the other, it performed the same. It really had, uh, couldn't tell the difference. So with that, uh, and this, this one's a, a variation on the theme. I was trying to get a, a model that you could also uh, throw as a, as a free flight up and away, and it would be trimmed. So it's definitely a different uh, issue than what we had to deal with when we're flying in, in ground effect because, as I mentioned, the center of pressure shift. Uh, this one tries to do two things. Uh, um, it's balanced forward so it can fly free flight. And uh, it also has the polyhedral and the V-tail which tend to counteract the, the anhedral that you see on this airplane. This airplane trying to fly free and up and away will want to roll over so that the dihedral is in the normal direction. But to counteract that, the V-tail and the tips seem to, to uh, allow this one to fly free. It also flies a little bit in ground effect, and we can, we can see that. But the best performers in ground effect are these two here. This one I use over very rough surfaces, asphalt, street, sidewalk, what have you, and you can see it's well beaten up. And it doesn't really make much difference whether you, uh, you uh, uh, take the details to make it look fairly nice or just leave it rough. It flies just as well. Uh, this one has end plates on the wing to keep air from leaking out the sides. 
And uh, other than that, it, they're, they're basically the same. Okay.